Hi guys, welcome back to Splendid Knitting, where today I am participating in my first test knit for somebody. Um, someone reached out to me through Ravelry about test knitting a cute ankle sock pattern that they made, and I was like, why not? Like, I've never test knit before. So here we are. Um, first thing I want to cover today is that I missed, like I forgot to put in the footage of me opening up my new interchangeable needles in the last video. So I'm just gonna put that here. So please enjoy me getting really excited about my Licka Driftwood interchangeables. Oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> What's up everybody? <laughs> that was such a underwhelming introduction because this is actually very exciting. I'm actually very excited uh, because something came in the mail and I was gonna like open it up for the first time on camera because I want to share the joy. <laughs> but unfortunately, I could not be restrained. I was like a wild animal um, and I ripped through the Amazon package find these oh my god um these are the Licka I think that's how you say it driftwood interchangeable needles the five inch needles so I just want to show what is in here I think this is the kind that I saw well loved knits like showing off too so I like kind of thought um They've been tested, so it should be all good. I'm still a little sick, by the way. That's why my voice is being like this. Um, so, we open it up, and there, <laughs> there it is. Oh my god. And they're so, like, smooth. I feel like these are going to be so nice to work with. Get in focus, girl. I don't even think I'm out of focus. I think my camera is so bad that it's just blurry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so the needles, the biggest ones are 12 millimeters, which I feel like would be good. I've been thinking about making a blanket again, because I made one uh, in 2020, I think, like one of my first projects. But I feel like it's time again to jump into that. Um, and then the smallest ones are down to a 3.5 millimeter. So, and you know what? That's probably the smallest I would dare to go. I don't like small needles. Um, and then for the included items, so it has this little pocket with little notions in it. Um, these, Oh, these are the stoppers that you can put at the end of your needles so that stitches don't fall off when you're trying something on or just letting something rest. We got all the cords in a little bag and we have the, the keys and the connectors to twist on the needles and to uh, make the, like put two cords together so you have a really long one. Okay, there's also, right where the, the needles connect to the, the back of the case, there's like Velcro that you can pull apart. Can someone tell me what that is for? Like why that comes down? Because I have no, I can't imagine like what that's for. There's also this zipper at the back. And I don't really know what that's there for. Maybe like stitch markers. You just throw extra stuff you might need in there. So that's handy. Um, I did want to show something that made me want to cry with joy is that when you look at these needles and you hold them, there's no way, there's no chance that these two parts are going to separate from each other. Oh my God, can you focus? My biggest frustration with the cheap interchangeables that I've been using before 
um, or that these parts would these parts would separate while I was knitting and then I'd want to like rip my hair out but this one is not gonna do that I am so excited I also am almost ready to do or I'm, I'm about to start the toe of the Sunday sock and then I'm gonna make another one baby and I just hope I have enough yarn I think I do okay see you later wasn't that fun <laughs> Oh my god. Um, so, I don't know how to say her name, um, but Signa, maybe, from Knit Witchery, uh, reached out to me with her pattern. And today I went to get the yarn for it, and I got the right needle size for it. Um, and I'm just going to take you along with the journey because it's turning out to be really fun. I cast on today. And so there's supposed to be these cute Valentine socks with a heart motif on them. And I bought this really dark gray yarn with white contrasting hearts. Since my room is dark, it just kind of looks like a black sock, but it kind of is. Because um, I thought... It was actually... The Michaels I went to was really understocked with, like, sock yarn colors. I think they were, like, mid-rearranging all the yarn that they had. So, like, it was a bad day to go because I couldn't even reach half of the yarn, but... I like this one. It was one of the only solid colors, and I thought, okay, we're gonna do emo valentines. Because look at me. Do I look like I have somebody for Valentine's Day this year? No. And that's okay, because I'll be knitting instead. This is how much I've done today. I'm going pretty slow, I think, compared to other people, but pretty fast for me. Um... And I'm having a lot of fun. I was worried I didn't get enough yarn for the entire sock, but I found this lighter gray blend in my stash. And I'm thinking if I, if I do the heels and toes in this gray, then I'll probably have enough yarn. So that's my plan. And I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Okay, a couple updates. This is my third day working on the sock. Today, I managed to finish the heel and a couple rows after. Um, but I'll tell you guys, this has not been my first attempt at this heel. You'll notice that I didn't use a contrasting color. Um, this is my second attempt. On my first attempt with the contrasting color, I thought, I don't need to use the video. I'll just use the written pattern to make the heel that I have never attempted before. Um, you might be thinking, are you crazy? And yes is the answer. Uh, because I tried to do that, it wasn't working. I was making mistakes left and right and when I this this heel the shadow wrap heel involves triple stitches and when I went in to work the triple stitch what happened was that the yarn I was using snapped um, like it just was no longer part of the sock anymore. It snapped and I just about set my house on fire. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I, but I was not happy. Um, so I unraveled it back to the solid base color and just did it again. And this time I used the video, which was way better. And I actually did it and it's like, kind of the best heel I think I've ever worked and I haven't done a lot of socks so that's like not saying much but 
it just looks really seamless. As far as the test net is going, um, I think I'm kind of on track. I want to have at least one sock done by February 1st, which is kind of the, the finish date, but she said if we need more time, we can just like show a, a progress update. So I want to have worked at least one sock by then so I can like have tried the entire pattern. But uh, I'm gonna try to get everything done by then because I think that would be satisfying. That just gives me like four days. So like if I could finish this today, which probably won't happen, then I would be on track. Now I'm just rambling. So <laughs> I'm gonna be making carrot muffins now. And then I might go skating. So that's your update. Here are the carrot muffins. As you can tell, they're all slightly different sizes, which is great. Um, but I have this cream cheese icing that I'm gonna put on them now. So let's see how it goes. Hi guys, um, I don't remember what I last said about the test knit. Either way, I finished a sock. Today was, today is like the due date kind of for the test knit. So I did send in my feedback and everything. My goal was to have just one sock at least done so that I have gone through the entire pattern, but here she is. Okay, I have not enough yarn to make another sock, so I have to buy more yarn. I'm a little annoyed about this, but like I don't ever make socks, so maybe it's normal to have to buy two skeins of yarn to make a pair of socks, or maybe I just have dogs with a capital D, and you know, <laughs> it's just a different experience for me with my enormous Bigfoot dogs. Anyway, so I won't be trying it on for you guys <laughs> because you have to pay money for that. I'm just kidding. Uh, I just don't want to do that. So here she is. I'm going to make another one. Um, it was really easy to follow because I know like I never make socks so I don't know how i don't know how and i've been stumped by sock patterns before i don't think i've ever once made <laughs> more than one sock of a pattern like i've never made a pair of socks i've made a sock i made two separate socks before um sunday socks is one of them but i'm planning on making another uh, and this one I will be making another but if you're also new to socks like sock knitting um, the pattern is really easy to follow um, it's by knit witchery I think I said it before and I tried to say her name but I can't <laughs> but yeah if you're new to sock knitting this is a great place to start it's an ankle sock so it's like it's fast so you're not kind of getting stuck on the second sock, which I, I'm doing with the Sunday socks. Um, this one is just a matter of getting the yarn. There is hair on my lips. So <clears throat> yeah, she's going to be releasing the pattern tomorrow. And I will put the link in the description to, I think it'll be on Ravelry, the Ravelry page. And you can check out all the information about my version of this on Ravelry 2 and yeah it was a good experience for my first time test knitting for somebody and I had a lot of fun and the heel oh my gosh okay so I tried it first with the contrast colors 
the yarn that I was using snapped. Like we're going crazy, we're doing triple stitches, which is a part of the shadow wrap heel. And the yarn gives up on me. I might have already said this, I don't care, okay? Um, <laughs> so we had to go back and try again, but I watched a video for it and this is actually so much fun. Like knitting heels, so much fun. Like I, I couldn't stop. So I'm excited to do it again for the second sock. Um, what else is there? Oh my god, grafting the toe. It looks seamless. You can't see it because it's a dark yarn, but like, who knew that you could do that? Anyway, so my mind is boggled and I had so much fun. Next important thing, I did in fact cast on the cloud sweater. Um, we haven't done too much yet. I have been thinking about whether this color is good for me like i don't know if it like washes me out let me know in the comments if this is a bad color for me like i'm gonna make it anyway because i like the color but like i don't know if it works with my skin like my features maybe with the right makeup if i had like peachy makeup i kind of i don't know okay we'll figure it out um Something I noticed about the Sweet Apricot one is that it feels rougher than other, like, colors I've used of it. And I don't know if maybe it's, like, the way they have to dye it to get this color that makes it less soft, but, like, it was just a bit of a noticeable difference compared to, like, my sweater number 18 in the sea green one, and my, like, frozen lake cardigan, I think I used wheat, colorway wheat for that, but yeah, this one just feels a little itchier, so I hope that isn't a problem, but we'll find out. Before you ask, no, I did not have the money to buy this pattern, but I bought it anyway. I don't need to go to university, I'll just knit instead. Okay, what else? I'm wearing the tank top I knit in the summer, or um, right before the summer. It looks adorable still. It hasn't stretched too much, so it still fits well. And I would love to make more summer tops, because this is like... I made three, I think, including this one. Two of them I never wear, because... One of them stretched and the other one is like 100% wool. Like, what was I thinking? I, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I have so much to talk about right now, but I do, you guys. I reread this book. I read the Akatar series in, I think completely in the month of November. I read all of them. And I know if you've read the series, a lot of people are not going to agree with me. This was my favorite one. Like, when I tell you that I cried through the last, like, 30 pages, I'm not, like, I'm not exaggerating. I, <laughs> I was sitting in my bed weeping about, okay, well, I'm not going to spoil it, <laughs> but... I'll just tell you that I was weeping and you know I've seen interviews where Sarah J Mass is like talking about how she was working through her own mental stuff and this was her outlet for it and um yeah so <laughs> I haven't been thriving recently as you might I've like expressed a little bit it's like going back and forth it's not a linear journey, you guys, but reading this, healing, it brought everything to the surface in a good way. Like, I felt like I was getting stuff out by reading this book, and it's so good. So if you like 
read the first few and then stopped at this one because Nesta is like not incredible in the first ones. Um, just, just, just read it. Please, like, just read it. When a redemption arc is done well, like, oh my god, it's emotional. But you have to read it. And if you haven't read Akatar, anyway. So, I think that's all for now. Um, we'll see if I include, like, the next sock in this video, but I don't think I'll have much else to say, and, um, I won't be putting them on, so there's not really anything left there. Um, so I might be done here for this one, and if I am, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys don't mind that I've been kind of going crazy about reading now too and talking about that um but it's just nice to have an outlet for it because this gap year girl I'm sitting at home all the time if I'm not at home and I'm like at work like those conversations are not usually super deep hi how are you would you like a bag is kind of the extent of it so it's just nice for me to get it out on here even if like no one cares because I care anyway I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you next time Goodbye.